Do you want to batch process images in GIMP to speed up your workflow? Why not try and install the free BIMP plugin for quick and easy image batch processing in GIMP 2.10? BIMP is awesome, free and powerful plugin for GIMP software. Okay, let's go ahead and open up the web browser. And inside of Google, I'm going to type in BIMP, B I M P for GIMP, G I M P, right? BIMP for GIMP, and it's going to take us through to this website here. I'm going to click here, and you can see the BIMP manipulation program. You've got the Windows installer, you've got the Mac OS as well. So you can only install this on Windows and Mac OS. I don't believe there's a, a Linux version, but this is fine. We can go ahead and click install for Windows. When we go ahead and click that, it's going to start downloading the software. I'm just going to move this to one side and open up this folder on my desktop, and we'll go ahead and drag and drop this into this folder. We can see that Norton's has scanned it and it's saying it's safe to install. So let's close down the browser and then we'll go ahead and launch this application. Just follow the on-screen instructions and it will ask us to agree and then it will install. We can click next and then you can see uh, where you actually access the software from. Open location and then it's underneath the file option here, open location and then batch manipulation. Let's go ahead and test this using GIMP. Okay, on my desktop, I've got this folder and inside this folder, I've got this subfolder called test images and I've got these four images which I downloaded from Unsplash. I'll put links to these same images in the YouTube description or you can use your own images. Okay, let's go ahead and test this batch manipulation program in GIMP software. So let's go ahead and open up GIMP and we're gonna to go to file and we're gonna to go to batch image manipulation, this new option. We're gonna click it and we'll get this little window pop open and it allows us to do batch manipulation on the images using a few different uh, options. So the first thing we need to do is tell the software what images do we wanna manipulate. So we'll click add images here and I'm gonna add a whole folder. You can add a single image or you can add a whole folder. I'm gonna go ahead and click folder, go inside here and I'm going to select this folder where we downloaded and uh, stored the images. Again, you can use your own images, but I'm going to use these ones as an example. I'm going to click add and all the images are listed down the side here. These are the import. We need to output. So I'm going to click on this little option here and I'm going to go back into this folder, go into test images and I want to create a new folder. And in this example, I'm going to call it watermark, right? Watermark. And I'm going to select that folder. So this is where the output is going to go to. So I'm going to add a watermark to those images, batch manipulate them and add a watermark. So let's click the add button up here. And here's all the different actions. You can flip, rotate, resize. You can compress. Uh, you can apply GIMP procedures to it. You can save this as a set. You can load the set. You can do lots of different things in here. But for now, we're going to click add watermark. So this option appears and it's asking me, do I want to add a text watermark or an image one? To make life a little bit easier, I'm just going to add a text one. So I'm going to type in DTP web designers, just as an example. And here's the font style and here's the size. Now these images that I'm manipulating are quite high resolution. So I'm going to click on here and I'm going to set the font size quite high, something like, uh, let's say 48, quite a large font size because the, the image itself is quite large as well. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK and I want to change its color. So let's just make it white, for example, right? We'll click OK. You can see white here. We'll click OK. And that's asking me, where do I want to position uh, this watermark? And we can set the opacity. So let's set the opacity down to like maybe 80%. And I want it to be in the bottom right-hand corner of those images, right? So it's going to be in the bottom right-hand corner of the images. And I want it to be, let's say, 100 pixels away from the edge. I'm going to click the OK button. And I'm going to click the apply button and this bar down here is going to show me the progress right here of how many images it's done and how many are left to do right so it's halfway through now and now it's finished and it gives you a message at the end uh, all files have been processed with zero errors that's good let's go ahead and click close and we'll minimize this and let's just go ahead and open up this folder and inside this folder, we've got the new images because remember I said to store the updated images in here. And if we open it, we can see DCP web designers in the bottom right hand corner, just as we wanted it to be. It's not so legible in this image because it's kind of white on white, but you can, uh, if you zoom in close enough, you can see it down here. Uh, and we've got uh, a couple more images in here, right? So let's just see, let's try and get the, here it is, the arrow. So we've got this one here and here, so you can see them all here. So let's try another experiment. 
Before continuing this tutorial, it would be awesome if you can hit that like button. You can also support my channel by simply subscribing and hitting the bell icon. Many thanks. Okay, let's go ahead and open up the GIMP software again. And we'll go to File, Batch Manipulation, and we're going to click Add, and we're going to add those same images, right? So we'll open up this folder, go into here. Here's the four images that we want. We'll click Add. Let's go to the Output folder here, and then we can go back in here, go to the Test Images. We don't want watermarks this time, so I'm going to create a new folder, and let's call this uh, Resize, right? And we'll open up that folder. So we've got a new folder called Resize. We're going to click OK. So in the options here, we can see there's a resize option. So in this case, I want to try and reduce the file size. Because if we look at the uh, images here, and if we select them, they are 5.17 megabytes. So it's quite a large file. You'll never add images like this to your website. You'll always resize them, right? Before you add them to your website. Or if you want to add it to social media, then resizing the images before you upload them to Facebook or your Instagram, or if you're going to upload it, it would make more sense that you resize them because you'll never need to have images at this resolution. They're way too big. Okay, so let's go back to the software. Let's go back to this software. Let's find it. Here it is. And we will set the width to 25% and the height to 25%. So you can see there's a percentage value. You can set it to a pixel value as well, but we're going to leave it at a percentage value. So it'll be a quarter of the original size. And it, we don't want to stretch the image. We want to preserve its aspect ratio. These other settings, honestly, I'm not too sure what they're about. You might have to read up about them. They're a little bit techy, but I'm just going to leave them on their default. I'm not going to change the resolution on the specific X or Y axis. I'm just going to leave all of these options in default. I never really mess around with this stuff down here but feel free to go and read up about it and maybe you can learn a bit, little bit more about it i'm going to go ahead and click ok and then click apply and this is how i batch manipulate maybe 50 or 100 images especially if i want to add them to my portfolio for my website or if i want to upload loads of images to social media maybe some sort of gallery and i don't want to upload like 50 60 megabytes worth of images i want to compress them all down and then upload them so if i close this minimize this and we'll open up this folder we'll go inside here and we can see the resize so the original images were 5.17 megabytes the resized versions now are 622 kilobytes less than one megabyte so this is almost like one fifth less than one fifth of the size right and if we open up the image we can still see the images of good quality it's not going to be a problem uploading something like this to instagram or facebook or adding them to your website but you don't really want to you know have to upload 50 60 images and they're all quite high file sizes like one meg that's like 50 meg right now you can go and batch process them upload these images and it will be a lot a lot quicker okay let's go ahead and close this folder i'll leave you to go and experiment with the batch processing plugin okay so that's the end of this video tutorial i hope you found it useful don't forget to check out my youtube channel where you can find over 750 free video tutorials on a wide range of software applications and I look forward to seeing you in the next DCP web tutorial.